Welcome to Her Story on a Plate, a place for real talk about real bodies. Let's dish about our complex relationships to food and bodies. We are two experts in the field coming at this from an anti-diet, your body holds wisdom approach. This podcast is all about changing the conversation we have in our heads and culture so that we can embrace ourselves fully. Welcome to Her Story on a Plate. We are thrilled to have Jenny Rushmore with us today. Jenny Rushmore is an innovator in the world of size-inclusive fashion. That's that radical idea that clothes should fit us versus us trying to change our body to fit clothing. Jenny is the founder of Cashmeret, a phenomenal business that empowers sewists with curves to create a dream wardrobe that actually fits. Jenny's also the author of the book, Sewing the Curve and Ahead of the Curve. And all of her exquisite work is in service to all of us, feeling truly at ease in our clothing and feeling our best. And you've got to listen to how Jenny and I met. It was wild. Welcome, Jenny. We are so delighted to have you on Her Story on a Plate. Thank you so much, Nina and Jenny. Lovely to be here. Well, we have to get something straight here, though. You're Jenny and I'm Jenny, but you are Jenny of the Queen's English. I am Jenny of Queen's New York. Just so <laughs> in case the can fell apart, I just want to make sure it is really a delight to have you with us. We're, we're really looking forward to this. I think we have to start with how you, Jenny Rushmore, and Nina met. <laughs> Because I think it's a hilarious story, not that I want to give it away. How did you meet? Just last week. <laughs> Just I was week. in my favorite restaurant in Boston area, which is called Sama's, very, very good Middle Eastern restaurant, with my friend. And in walked Nina with a friend, I, I think. I don't really know. I never yes. spoke to the other person. <laughs> and immediately, my I kind of like my head turned because, you know, I'm in the business of fashion and models and looking for, uh, in inverted commas, real women. It's a bad phrase, but like non-professional women to be models for us. And over the years, I've kind of honed a sense of who would be a good model. It's not actually just like, are you pretty? I mean, obviously, Nina is very pretty, but it's not just that. There's like various different aspects to it. And immediately I was like, oh, I'm going to have to go and speak to that woman. So then I realized that I didn't have any business cards, as always. I scribbled my name, my name on the back of a menu with my heart racing slightly, literally approached Nina at the bar and said, hello. And she looked at me like, who on earth are you? Would you maybe be interested in modeling? And um, as Nina can test on her side, it's quite funny. She was like, well, only if you were size inclusive. And I was like, well. Then the deal is sealed because that is literally what I do. Yeah. So funny thing. And then we realized, I I said, I realized there must have been some kind of kismet here that I was, I was like, I have to go and talk to that woman. I know it was hysterical. When you came up to me, I was, who is this woman? Of course. And then you said what you did, that you had a company that created patterns for women. And the first, thought was, and then you said, oh, will you model for me? Mm -hmm. And at first I laughed hysterically inside because I thought here I am, a woman who's almost 60 sitting at a bar being approached and being asked, would you be a model? So I thought that was pretty amusing. But I also was a little bit surprised that my first words out of my mouth Mm -hmm. were, is your clothing size inclusive? Because it felt I was surprised when I heard that too. Well, it's, I'm not sure that even would have been my first response. Yeah, I just thought, well, if I'm going to stand up for somebody's fashion concept, it better be things that women can actually wear. Which brings us into this whole conversation that we really want to get into with you, Jenny. Which is, how did you start? creating clothing for many sized women and being so size diverse? In some ways, it's sort of a long story. So 
as I grew up, we have plenty of time. I'll just put my feet up on the desk. Go ahead. Go for it. It's a bit dangerous asking me a question because I can go for about two hours. So yeah, when I was growing up, I was always on the bigger side. So like higher percentile, just always a bigger person. And I always struggled to find clothes that fit me. And as I got older, I also got this kind of very bodacious bust going on here. I'm an H cup. So even if I could find something in my theoretical clothes size, nothing would actually fit across my boobs unless it was stretchy or it wouldn't fit me. And so for a very long time, that was a huge problem in my life because it actually affected my self-esteem a lot. And it really felt like this arbiter, this measurement by which I was judging myself. It's like, if you can't walk into a shop and find something that fits, then what's wrong with you? You literally don't fit in, right? Like there must be something wrong. And Jenny, I just want to, I want to interrupt you right there because in that thought that you express so well, which is what's wrong with me, I'm the problem. Jenny Mm -hmm. and I hear all the time right? What's wrong with me that I don't fit? Exactly. And at the time, I wasn't even very conscious of this. I think it was just like, just deep in me. Like I didn't even realize how bad it was until it changed, Mm -hmm. if you see what I mean. So then, you know, life went on and it was a real struggle because I couldn't, not only couldn't I find things to fit, but I'm like kind of a big personality. I like bright colors. I like prints. I'm, you know, quite a bold person. You can't find that in plus sizes, like especially not in the like 90s and early 2000s. It just didn't exist. So it was this very suppressing and negative thing. Like I felt like clothes were making me feel bad about myself effectively. And time went on. I just kind of accepted it. But I've always done creative things. I've always been artistic. And so um, I was going through a breakup when I was 30. And I thought, I need to just do a new hobby. So I decided to learn so. So I learned to sew. And almost immediately, I had my first revelation, which was just like, oh, like maybe I could sew my clothes. And it was like, hmm, that's that's Mm -hmm. really interesting. So I started like trying to learn. And then I hit the same problem as with ready-to-wear clothes is that sewing pants Mm -hmm. didn't come in my size either. And just for perspective, like I'm a size 14, 16, which is the literal average size of a woman in America. And I was lucky if I was the biggest size in a sewing pattern. And also at that point, 100% of sewing patterns were made for a B cup. Now there's nothing wrong with being a B cup, but the average woman is a double D. So it's very, very far off what the average woman's bra size is. So I learned how to change the patterns, right? You can physically take a sewing pattern and you can slice it up and you can move the lines. And all of a sudden that was my big, like, you know, it's sort of like a before and an after in my life. Because the big revelation that I had is that I didn't have to change my body to fit my clothes. I could literally change the clothes to fit my body. That there was nothing wrong with Can my body. Can you just say that? Say that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Say that about <laughs> five times and much no. slower. Because we want everybody yeah. in the back to hear that one. Yeah. Well, at this point, I've literally written books on this topic. But yeah, so I realized there was nothing wrong with my body. There was something wrong with the clothes. And the more yeah. I learn about fitting and bodies, and now I've fitted you know, thousands of people, it's all of us. You don't even have to be plus size to have these challenges. What we yes. found in our research is that 80% of women are different sizes at the bust, waist, and hip. Okay, so hold on one second. Hold on. Because you are throwing down a lot of important information for us to like assimilate Mm -hmm. into our brain that has been trained to believe that our body should be a certain size, fit into certain proportions. Because what you're saying is the reality is, what was the statistic? 80%. 80%. And that's in our research. Who knows? Maybe it's higher in the grand outside world. But for me, my boobs are like, I don't even know what, like a size 24 or something, if you just measure them, even if the rest of me is a 14 or a 16. And when you think about it, it's not some like, you know, conspiracy against people like me. It's just that we are snowflakes, right? Everyone has totally different proportions. And to me, bodies are just geometry now, right? So like it very much neutralized how I felt. Like, What I say now is that knowing your measurements, which you need to know for sewing, 
It's just like knowing how much flour needs to be in a cake. There's no such thing as a good amount of flour or a bad amount. There's just an amount to make a nice cake. So if you want to make a dress and it needs to fit you, you need to know what your measurements are. But you can make, anyone can make a dress in any measurements. There's no morality in it at all. It's not good and bad. It's just we're covering one object with fabric. (laughs) You're also saying something very interesting, right? Which is that we have to know our measurements, right? They're really just numbers. They're geometry, as you say. And now we walk into your average store, or if you're ashamed to do that, or you're uncomfortable doing that, so you're shopping online, and you know these measurements. Big deal. Because knowing those measurements doesn't allow you to necessarily get the clothing that's going to fit your best. It's quite a wonderful thing that you've come up with this way, which we want to hear more about, about how to tailor clothing to any woman's size body, literally any size body. And we can't walk into a store and do that. It's my hope that one day women have a choice to have their clothing made or, or learn how to make their own in the way that you're doing. And also to have the option to walk into a store or some assortment of stores that isn't just patting itself on the shoulder because it has a a section called plus size. I mean, one thing I do think is very interesting, if you just look at the historical context, until the 1920s or 1930s, ready-to-wear clothes didn't exist. There was no such thing as a size six. So if you got a dress in like 1890, you didn't go and buy one in a size. Everyone's clothes were made for them, whether they made them or someone else did. So there was no like judgment against what we were comparing ourselves, right? And then there was a standardization and there was mass industrialization of clothing. And the thing is, again, it's not evil. Like clothing manufacturers have to choose something, right? Like they had to pick. Now, I will say it was very racist because it was entirely based on like research of white nurses. So it's very racist. But they had to pick some combination of things. So they pick this combination, but a very, very tiny percent of women regardless of your size, will actually fit in that. And in sewing, what it's called for us, it's called grading between sizes. And I actually wrote a book called Ahead of the Curve, which is all about learning to fit sewing patterns if you're plus size. So it starts at a size 12, goes to a 32. And it's the first thing I teach once we got the real basics. It's how to grade between sizes. So you are an 18 bust, you're a 20 waist, and you're a 14 hip. That's exactly me here's how you do it. And the funny thing is, it's actually very easy, but it's also kind of life-changing for people because for me personally, once I started wearing clothes that fit me, like there were two huge things that happened. The first one is I started wearing clothes that fit me that were in fabrics I liked and made me look good. And a lot of people would comment that they thought I'd lost weight, which actually kind of annoyed me because I hate that that's a default comment. But the point is, is that they actually fit me. And it's very, uh, previously, I had to just pick a point in my body that would be fitting and then everything else would be tight or loose. All of a sudden they fit me. And I felt so much more confident because I could wear the like bold colors. And I discovered that there were things that I thought I couldn't, I'm doing inverted commas here, couldn't wear because someone with my body type couldn't wear them. It turned out to be 100% not true. The reason I couldn't wear a moto jacket is that no one made a moto jacket for size H boobs. The reason I couldn't wear a button-down shirt is because no one had made one in my size. Turns out, literally anyone can wear anything. So, I mean, I have to say, Jenny, I think there will always be a market for the kind of thing that you're doing, right? Because first of all, you know, you're not only creating clothes for people to be so much more comfortable in, you're also creating a way for them to learn how to do that for themselves, mm-hmm. right? And then there'll be people like me who cannot sew a button to save their lives. And I'm proud of it. So I wish for the day too, that at some point, the clothing industry will look to people like you to really understand how flexible sizing has to be. I mean, even now, if you go into any store and you think you are some size, whatever that is, you will not be the same size in 10 different manufacturers. And so a lot of, not just women, people 
go through a lot of mental machinations when they say, oh my God, I was that size in that. Why am I that size in that? And they make it mean a lot. Yeah, I will say, I can give a little insight. There are two fascinating facts on this very topic, which are a little counterintuitive as to why that is good, which I know it sounds weird, not feeling bad about it, but that it's different. The first thing, this isn't the good one, but just to understand, when manufacturers cut, say, a pair of jeans, they stack up 50 layers of denim on a table, and then they use what looks like a saw, like a hand saw, to go through and cut them out. They very rarely cut them at 90 degrees. And what that means is they're cutting out 50 size 12s. The top ones could be an inch smaller than the bottom ones when they're made up because of how they're manufactured. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. Like you can literally go back to J. Crew and buy your, well, online, buy your size 20 jeans the next time. There'll be a different size. You haven't actually changed size. Like there's variability. But the second thing is, and I think this is a really interesting point, it's really good that sizing isn't consistent. The reason is, if making it up, stores decided that a size 18 is 48, 38, 48, they just decided that's it. You would either fit in every single store or zero stores. But in reality, (laughs) every store has what's called a block. And the block is the under, is the average size of each range. So they usually have like one that's about size six or eight and then ones that's about like a size 16. And they decide, they make a lot of decisions about what the proportions of this block are. And it isn't just bus waist hip. It's also like your shoulder width and your like crotch depth, things like that. And they all do it slightly differently. And the good news about that is that it's possible that you will be very close to one of them, right? But we actually don't want everything to be identical because then you would never find anything that fit you, which when I first heard that, I was like, this is blowing my mind a bit, but it's actually a really interesting, I think, thought. It's so valuable to hear this. And, you know, I'm thinking about the folks that Nina and I see so often, right? Who live in a world that is so size defined. And so it just adds to the weight stigma. It adds to people having evidence about how bad and wrong larger people must be, how slovenly Mm -hmm. they must be, how lazy they must be, because, you know, this is their punishment by not being able to find the clothing that they would love to wear, no matter what size they are. Yeah. Jenny, you're giving us so many good words that support body neutrality, Mm -hmm. right? Like this is just geometry. This is 80% of women who don't fit into the mold. This is a variety of sizes. This is one inch differentiation. It just starts to break away the Mm -hmm. idea of a good body and a bad body. Yeah. Right. A body that fits or a body that doesn't. And so the work that you're doing around patterns is really working on internal patterns and beliefs Mm -hmm. of how a woman really sees herself. Yeah. And how she walks in the world. And we've honestly heard that a lot. Like for me, I mean, look, it happened to me personally, right? Like when I learned to fit these clothes, it was a massive step forward in like my body image huge step forward like to the point that like I remember vividly that a um a Scottish newspaper ran a story about me and it had a full page picture of me in a swimsuit that they'd taken without permission but whatever it's fine off my blog and I looked at it and I was like oh cool that's nice isn't it and then I thought a few days later five years ago I would have been devastated by that that a newspaper printed a picture of me in a swimsuit, I would have been devastated. And I would have been like looking at my body. And, but now I was like, no, I was just like, cool. That swimsuit looks awesome on me. Isn't it a nice photo? I look really happy. Cool that I'm in this newspaper. And it was a real like moment of realization for me. In my previous life, I used to work a lot with models. They don't look like models. When you meet them in reality, they don't look like that. And I always say like, my pictures, my jokers, I could be on the side of a bus. I'm not like a massively gorgeous person, but you put all that stuff around me and put me in clothes I like, and I'm happy and like just confident. I look great. And so that's been a huge shift for me. And and to your point, Nina, like we hear this all the time. So 
we get feedback and it's the best bit of my job, honestly, about people saying that it literally has changed their lives, our sewing patterns and my books, which it sounds hyperbolic, but I've now met people who would sometimes like burst into tears and stuff, but they're like, I thought I was ugly and horrible. And then mm, yes. I made your whatever dress and I was like the bell of the ball. And everyone was like, wow, look at you. We had one woman who, who said her literally the whole path of her life changed, which was crazy. She was very depressed and having a very hard time. And now she literally has a punk hairstyle. I mean, she was like kind of quiet before a <laughs> punk hairstyle and is like on the internet constantly, like showing off all these amazing outfits. And what's interesting is I think sometimes when I tell people what I do, it sounds superficial, right? Like I work in fashion and in clothes and it's like, mm. but I think what they don't realize or they don't fully think is like the extent to which clothes affect people's confidence. And it makes sense. Like if you had to wear a trash bag all day, you wouldn't feel good about yourself. And especially, and I'll say, you- uh, and by the way, that, yeah. and then by the way, that would not be comfortable if you're going through menopause. <laughs> let me just say, it would be very, but the, very sweaty. Very sweaty. And the other thing, Jenny, to your point though, is clients talk to me all the time about their relationship with their closet. Mm -hmm. They open their closet and then it's like their clothes are yelling at them yeah. and demeaning them and making them feel like they are terrible humans. Imagine, right? You open your closet and all of your clothes are singing to you about how gorgeous you yeah. are. That's a very different way to exactly. start your day. It makes perfect sense to me that people would be coming to you and saying, yeah. oh my gosh, my whole reality has changed because I opened my closet and my closet says to me, you're awesome. Yeah, You're perfect as you are in all of your humanity. The joke that I make is that it's like taking back the means of production, right? So it's a bit Marxist. But the analogy is that imagine all your life, you could only eat in one restaurant. But by the way, you're also gluten-free. And there are four mm. things on this menu you can eat. And your whole life, you just eat these four things again and again and again. And it's like kind of dispiriting. And then one day, someone teaches you how to cook. And now you have an infinite amount of food you can eat, and it's all gluten-free. And that's what it's like to me. Yeah. It's like today, if I try and go down to the Prudential Mall and buy a dress for an event, I can tell you right now, I'd have zero luck. Like I wouldn't fit in a single thing. And if I was lucky, I'd find one thing, but I wouldn't find options. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to like experiment with fashion and how I feel, nothing. I was so restricted. And now the fabric shop, like, is the potential, right? You fit in, every person fits in everything in the fabric shop. You just have to buy enough of it. So we're talking to Jenny Rushmore from Kashmirat. Jenny, I have a question. Do you get a lot of inquiries from trans folks? Because one of the things that I hear a lot in, in, our, in our practice is that as folks are transitioning in some way, their bodies may not really fit the size mm -hmm. of the kind of clothing they now want to wear. And so I'm imagining, you know, that this would be a godsend if one has the, the ability yeah. to really create clothing that fits with one's identity. Absolutely. So there is a very, um, like excitable, enthusiastic online sewing community. So these days, mostly on Instagram, but in the past it was blogs. Like it's, I know there's a lot on YouTube and there are so many different kind of like flavors of people right within it because there's like the retro people who do rockabilly. There's the like very chic minimalist people. There are people who are sewing because no clothes come in their size at all. Right. Like you hit a certain size, like you actually can't buy clothes in stores and you're making underwear because you can't buy underwear. So there are people in that bucket. And then there are people who are just like non-conforming in any number of ways. Right. Maybe like they're much shorter or taller than average. Maybe they're gender non-conforming or they're trans. Like all of a sudden, again, it's like, it's up to you. You have to have the basic skills. So there's a certain level of privilege in it. Well, that, that's the whole damage of diet culture, isn't it? Right. That we're all taught at some point, our bodies should be changed, should be different, should be a certain size, look a certain way. I mean, this really beats the heck out of that. Because what you're really saying is, look, 
Your body is exactly what it is in the moment. It can't be anything other than what it is in the moment. That's the definition of, of acceptance. And by the way, enjoy it. Have fun. Look however you like to look. Yeah. And it's just, it's a beautiful message. It's a, an extraordinary journey that you've been on and a very courageous one, I have to say, Jenny, because a lot of people sit around over a cup of coffee and have great ideas. They don't then create necessarily businesses and books. And so it really speaks to your commitment, your tenacity, your ingenuity. And so, you know, I really applaud the whole project. You know, once again, we're talking to Jenny Rushmore from Kashmirat. And is there anything else that yeah. we should well, know? Jenny, I have one last question for you before we ask you how people can reach you, which is what would you say to your younger self who was struggling? My goodness. That makes me feel a bit emotional, to be honest, because, you know, yeah. I really, mm. I really was struck. First of all, I'd suggest learning to sew before the age of 30. I think if I had learned to sew when I was much, much younger, I would have been in a better place. I think also, you know, goodness, I, I just needed affirmation. And I went to a Lizzo concert. I realize at the moment she's got some difficult things going on. But I went to a Lizzo concert when she well, was in Boston. And I started weeping, like sobbing, like in the first 10 minutes. I feel slightly teary thinking about it. I started sobbing. I was like, why am I sobbing? You know, like, and Lizzo. And I was like, if this had existed when I was 13, my whole life would have been different. Because yeah. every person on that stage, apart from the DJ at the back, every single woman was fat, looked amazing, was wearing amazing clothes, was really cool and confident. So I think like, you know, if I could tell my 15 year old self, like in like, well, how many years? Goodness. In 30 years time, you're going to be watching this woman on TV who's just like fat and no one gives a, mm. you know, she's fine. She's That's beautiful. Right. She's confident. And it's going to be much, much, much better. I will tell you, like, I thought for a long time that me being fat was a secret and that no one could tell. And that if I just didn't mm. acknowledge it, and if I just bought clothes that were too small for me, that no one would ever know. Like, I truly kind of felt like that. And through the process yes. of launching Kashmir, it almost felt like I came out. It almost felt like mm. I was saying like, yeah, I'm like, I use the word fat as a neutral descriptor for myself. So you're saying, yeah, I'm fat. But you know what? Also, like, I used to always be like, I'm the biggest person in the room. And it also was like, no, I'm not. I know lots of people, bigger and smaller, who all look amazing. Who am I to turn around and be like, oh, I'm a 16. I'll never look nice. Like, that's rubbish. Look at this woman over here. She's a 28. She looks unbelievable. Look at this person over there. It totally changed things. You're reminding me of a, a great movie called The Help. And uh, there's a scene when um, there's this maybe three-year-old, four-year-old, and she's being told by her very, very, very wise nanny, who is a woman of color. She's actually the maid. I apologize. And she said to her, you know, she's trying to teach her because she figures out that her mother is all about appearance. And she tells her over and over the yeah. same thing every day. And she has her repeat it. She says, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. So mm -hmm. imagine mm -hmm. if that's the message all the time. And, you know, the rest as we it, were discussing I'll before, be you know, I'm the parent of a, a four-year-old who, as it happens, appears to be kind of a naturally thinner body type than I am. And she came home from school and, and mentioned like, oh, you know, there's this boy in my class and he's, he's quite fat, mummy. You know, he's got a big fat tummy and a big fat bum. And it was really odd, but I was almost excited because it was this like amazing opportunity that didn't happen to me when I was little to be like, <sighs> yeah, that's right. He's got a big body, hasn't he? And you know, that other girl, she's got a really tiny body, hasn't she? Some people are tall mm -hmm. and some people, and like, I've got a squishy tummy and you don't really. And like, there's just lots of people, isn't there? I said, and you know, maybe one day someone might be nasty to him about that. But what would you say to that? And she's like, oh, I would say, don't be nasty to my friend. It's okay to have a big tummy. It's okay to have a small tummy. And I was like, if I can keep her in this space, you know, if I can keep her in this yeah. world, I will have done one good thing at least. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You changed her life in that moment. Yeah. 
completely. She will never forget that conversation. That conversation will be challenged yeah. everywhere she goes, but it's a message that she keeps getting from you. That's not to say that we now need to throw every mother under the bus who has not given that message. But what we are yeah. saying is, what a wonderful, wonderful insight for you to have yeah. for her. And what a wonderful work that you're doing. It is an utter delight to have you on our program with us and really talk honestly about your story, about the clothing that you're creating, about the way that you're facilitating other people making their own clothing, no matter what their body size. Let me say that again, no matter what one's body size, one can wear whatever they want and look in any way they would like to look. And we're just so grateful to have you with us. Jenny, I'm glad I met you in the bar. <laughs> and yeah, really. would you share how people can learn more about you and your business and how folks can stay in touch with you? Absolutely. So everything is Kashmiret. So you can go to Kashmiret.com, which is C-A-S-H-M-E-R-E-T-T-E.com. That's our website. We have sewing patterns. We have online classes. We have a membership club that's really popular where with lots and lots of interaction and help to sew your own clothes. I'm on Instagram at Kashmir. That's the big social media thing for us. Yeah. And then I also have one book that's out and one book that's coming out next month. So my book that's already out is called Ahead of the Curve. It's for people who can already sew and it's all about learning to fit the patterns. So if you make something in a 16, you try it on and it doesn't fit and then you throw it in the trash and you think I'm never doing this again, this is the book for you. So it's very comprehensive. And is the book coming up for people like me who can't sew a button? Yes. So Good. Ahead of the Curve is already out everywhere. You can buy books. And then Sewing the Curve is coming out November 15th in the US and also in Europe. And it is for people who want to learn to sew. So it's literally everything from what kind of sewing machine do I need? How does fabric work? And it comes with six sewing patterns that you will basically learn how to start making a capsule wardrobe from sort of a basic swing dress all the way up to a lined sheath dress, a quilted jacket. So yeah, and there's lots of videos. We just have Put it this way. If you well, want you know, to learn to sew and you're plus size, we will get you there. We have lots of different resources. Well, you know what that means, Jenny Rushmore, don't you? That when your other book comes out, it means we have to have you on again. Well, if only I had something to <laughs> say, Jenny. We're just going to have to have you on again. It's been a delight to have you with us. Jenny Rushmore from Kashmirat. I'm Jenny Kramer and Nina Mandelson is with us as well. And we are just delighted to have you and uh, we wish everyone well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks for listening to Her Story on a Plate. Keep in touch with us at herstoryonaplate.com. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.